Before we begin the show, we offer our condolences to the families and friends of Philip Seymour Hoffman, who has played in many movies. His latest being the Hunger Games: Catching Fire, in which he had a brilliant performance. Just a bit ago, he had a sudden death, and at a fairly young age. You are missed by many. Get off the freaking net! And welcome to the Blaze On Nation, where the world wide web and real life world collide and brings current events to you and takes it all into debate. With your host from the depths, JBJ Blaze. Hello, this is Blaze On Nation, episode twelve, recorded on. You guessed it, Valentine's Day. That is February the fourteenth, twenty fourteen. We are into a new month after the previous episode, which was number eleven, which was last month, January. I do apologize for the time between. I've had a lack of time to work on some of this stuff due to school and a bunch of other stuff. So yeah. And I did plan on having an earlier airing of this one, but due to a lot of background noise, which I won't get into detail over, but it's not really worth my time fighting it. So here we are, Blaze on Asian episode twelve. <sighs> Now where do I start? So, about two weeks ago, we had exam week at my school, so I had to do a lot of studying. Well, not a a lot, but enough studying, anyways. And by golly, why am I getting into that now? That should be in sidewalk talk. But first, I will let you all know that one, if you stick around, you'll get to hear our news segment. Which is Blaze on reviews based on my double A AA and triple A review site, which isn't quite as updated as I'd like for it to be, but I haven't gotten time to work on it.、Um, Blaze on reviews. Tk. So, in any case, let's get into it. Sidewalk talk, talk where we aren't actually on a sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah, this is sidewalk talk. Yes, this is. I just lost myself there, but、um, if you don't know what this segment is about, but、um, sidewalk talk is about basically how things have gone in the past bit, and so I'll go with mine here. So. Like I said, I had exam week. I finally passed my. I finally passed some sort of grade eleven English, which I ended up resorting to the college level. But I finally passed it, so I'm very happy that I will most likely be able to graduate this year. And then this semester, I am finally into university courses. So I'm very, I was so very, very happy about that, and I have also, you might notice on my YouTube channel, I have recently started up a new series called Blazing Indies, which are、uh, quick little, not really first looks, but looks enough of indie games that I am given to review by the indie gamers, but it. Doesn't really have to do with the articles that I write there, but it's the games I'm doing. So I'll leave it to that. And then, unfortunately, earlier this week I ended up catching a cold from who I suspect had it、uh, before I did. Well, actually, she did, but I'm suspecting I caught it from her, my mother. But otherwise, Mother Nature took her naughty course. Well, not naughty. Her vile, witchcrafty course. 
whatever you, whatever despicable type you want to call it. All those nine yards. And so, yeah. So let's get to the rundown, shall we? Brace yourselves, it's the rundown. All right, so on the rundown this week, we have a few articles. We have a big topic going on here, which is over one, um, I'm not sure what you'd want to call him. Anywho, the um, whole petition going around in the U.S. demanding the removal of pop star Justin Bieber from America, which would, of course, land his butt back in Canada, which, to be honest, I'm not quite sure I'd really prefer him being here either, especially with his antics had he done in the U.S. And then, so there's the petition itself, which I will link to in the show notes, as well as that the White House actually, well, I'm not sure if they actually did yet, but they were to actually make an official response to the petition demanding his removal from the U.S. Something a little more recent is the death and suicide threats against... Oh, here we go. I found the right link. Okay, so it's at Dongatory. Dong Nugent. That's the guy, so I'll edit that little bit out. But, um, a lot of people have taken to making these threats just because they're overly addicted to Flappy Bird, which, yes, he can be addicted to a game. No matter which studies say you can't, you most absolutely can. If you're spending enough time on it, wasting enough of your life on it for no great purpose, um, yeah, you're addicted. Then again, there are people addicted to their jobs, but anyhow, and this is over him taking Flappy Bird down from both, no, not from both, from the Windows Phone, Android, and Windows Phone apps, no, the iTunes App Store, Windows Phone App Store, and Android App Stores. And then, finally, next up we have controversy again with Rob Ford, because he's been called homophobic over the fact that he demanded well, maybe not even necessarily demanded, but just requested that the pride flag be taken down at the Toronto City Hall. And so there's a huge controversy over that. And lastly, we have Senator Rand Paul, who files a lawsuit against the NSA. And will he win? Who knows? So, hey, let's get... Digging down. Digging down. Let's get to the details, shall we? Alright, so in the details, first of all, let's go to the Justin Bieber case. Now, the problem going on in the U.S. with Justin Bieber is that he's had... He's basically gone from pop star that nobody likes because he sounds like a girl and makes too many songs that are basically um, love British, lovey dovey, whatever description you want to go for. Basically sappy trash if you want to go for that definition of it and now he's turned into what you could say a legalized criminal because he has 
had cases against him for drug use, including having, I believe it was, marijuana all over his mansion or something like that. And this latest, well, and then him egging a house or so. And then, most, I believe it's most lately, drunk driving. Although I don't believe he hit anyone, fortunately. But things still remains. He was drunk and he was behind the steering wheel of a vehicle. Now, in terms of the drunk driving, like I said in the episode 10, my simple view on it is, uh, it's, it's just a completely selfish action. It just goes to show you have absolutely no regard for anyone around you. Because the high chances are, if you're drunk driving, you're going to end up killing somebody. Whether it's just running over them on a sidewalk, or going head f front end first into another car and killing that person. And in the first place, you have an option to leave wherever party or bar you're at sober. But no, you decide to drink way too much and end up slopping all over the frickin' streets, all over creation, and everybody's in fear for their lives. And possibly lives that might not even last long because this jerk doesn't know their limitations and fails to want to regard or do a darn thing about their limitations. Just that, quite simply. And what really narks me off about this is that just because he's got this high profile, he's this big pop star that all these little girls and teenage girls love, that for some reason he's let off when he should be in for life in prison. Referring back to that topic in episode 10, which if you don't know what happened in that episode, I recommend you listen to it. But in any case, it was about a 16-year-old who ran over four people drunk driving, and he only received 10 years probation. What I've noticed about court systems in the U.S., present day is they give a lack of a sentence to those who actually have serious crimes and a very serious sentence to those who have just the lamest action ever. Like take Justin Carter for example. He only made a smart alecky Facebook comment after playing a game where, in this game, League of Legends, if you if you look around on the internet, you're gonna find out that there will instantly be a lot of jerks on League of Legends. They will to no end ruin your fun because it's all about winning. There's no fun, or at least in competitive. I'm not exactly sure though. Because I haven't played it yet, and honestly, I'm kind of scared of playing it. Because if there's all these... Pardon the term, because I, I hear people are offended by it, but scumbags. Because, of course, there's a lot of those people on the internet. And for some reason, Justin Carter receives a 10-year sentence. A sentence of a bank robber over something as stupid as a Facebook comment. It's not bullying anybody. Sure, it has references to school shootings, but when, again, it's the internet. People say stupid crap. And then, in terms of the home investigation, there was absolutely no proof that he was mentally insane. 
and these past shootings, they, including Adam Lanza, they were mentally insane. Or at least mentally unstable. Might as well go mentally insane, because, like with Adam Lanza, he wanted to beat these other records. But anyhow, getting back on topic with Justin Bieber, like the NSA, they're being let off because they're a government-run agency, and Justin Bieber, he's being let off because everybody loves him. Everybody makes money off of him because he does all these concerts and shows and everything. Then again, even what my mother suggested is they put his butt in prison. I wouldn't blame the inmates if, they, well, it wouldn't be the greatest thing. It definitely would not be a pleasant thing, but it's definitely expectable that they'd beat the living crap out of his butt. Because, really, who of any of these people appreciate his stunts. There's even this lady who sued him or something like that over him tweeting her phone number and she received over a million phone calls from diehard fans. Honestly, I liked the kid a little better in his days when he just sounded like a dweeb of a girl and didn't have any other antics other than that. Other than the mild one like, or at least what I heard with him saying that he loved Beyonce or something like that and um, possibly peeving off Jay-Z because he's married to Beyonce. But, anyhow, to another topic because I'm running out of thoughts on that one other than I find it absolutely ridiculous. Let's get to the death and suicide threats against... I forget his name already. I think it was Dong Nugent. Yeah, Dong Nugent. So he is the genius behind the mobile app Flappy Bird. Which a lot of people have become obsessed over with how simple it is. With all you gotta do is tap the screen and the little bird flaps his wings. Now I can't really say too much about it myself because I've never played it. I do plan on doing a video go through of it though. But I'm gonna restrict myself. Because if it's that deadly, who knows. <laughs> And again, I could just be over underestimating it, whatever you want to call it. But Ali Langer, who you can follow at Ali Langer, and that is E L I A L A N G E R. I'll put it in the show notes. And um, he's made up a whole list of angry fans tweeting at Don Gatori. Either if you delete Flappy Bird, I'm gonna kill you. Even some of them resorting to explicit terms. Or people who will say, if you delete Flappy Birds, I will kill myself. Now this is one of many things that it's... It's one of those things that just makes me wonder where common sense has gone in this world. Um, it's kind of funny to see how stupid people are on the internet about something. How selfish they are. How just closed-minded, clouded, whatever you want to call it, about these things. Just over something that has nothing to do with them. Sure, they played the game, but it's not their choice to make. It's the developer's choice, and 
But then it's also sad to see that all these people would even claim that they'd want to throw their lives away or throw this guy's life away over removing the game. And honestly, I think he's pretty smart for doing it. And if it's gonna expose how stupid a lot of his fans are, I'm saying that his fans didn't come in a good way. Many, I'm sure, did. Just not these ones that are listed in this custom timeline for Flappy Birders not happy. And just really, people, are you, again, are you gonna throw a life away over a game, over a simple game where all you gotta do is tap the screen? And where you just get a high score where it beeps and boops? Like, sure, video games or mobile games can be bloody brilliant. Take Minecraft or Skyrim. What have you? Games can be absolutely brilliant. They can be wonderful. But to throw your life away? Really? It, it kind of reminds me of this instance that happened. I'm not sure where it was where I live, southwestern Ontario. But it happened somewhere in what? this kid had been grounded from his Xbox because he played too many shooting games or at least too much of a shooting game and his parents grounded him from it and so he ran away from home and I think it was something like he died in the cold or something or other and it uh, I'm not sure what exactly to say without getting too offensive, other than it's selfish, obnoxious, close-minded, what have you, to just lay your life on a game. YouTubing is one thing, because you're actually doing something extra with it. You're actually documenting yourself playing it. But just playing it? And wanting to screw your life over, over it, it, it's just ridiculous. But here is something interesting, in which it is the lawsuit against the NSA over the phone records being taken and honestly, I would absolutely. I'm not exactly sure whether it's a good idea. It's definitely a very interesting idea. And I really hope to see how it goes. And hey, so be it if it passes, then good D. Hopefully, it puts the NSA in the right place. And actually, I will link to this other thing in the show notes as well. Um, the day we fight back dot org. I think. Let me check that. Yeah, the day we fight back dot org. There is a thing you can sign there. Your name, email, and country. Um, all those will be. Your info is absolutely safe, and it's in support of stopping the NSA. I'm not exactly sure what it's, how it's supposed to do it, but hopefully something does work out, because, like I say, the NSA is unconstitutional, because it violates the Fourth Amendment and the privacy rights of Americans and over uh, identifying who's a terrorist and who's not and reducing that number or whatever. How many freaking terrorists has it found, really? 
really. And even... It, it kind of even relates to the uh, drone strikes by Obama. So really, well, Obama is involved with both. And it's actually kind of connected. Because the NSA is supposed to stop terrorists, and Obama's drone strikes were also supposed to um, stop terrorists, only for it to have a severe casualty number of innocent people, not terrorists. So many innocent people over just trying to catch maybe one, two, how many terrorists? Absolutely failed. And... Honestly, once there is a new election in the U.S., I hope to God that Obama is out of there. Because he screwed up the government enough. George Bush, he screwed it up too. But he actually informed people. He warned people before he was going to screw things up. He let the world know that he was going to launch a war on Iraq before he did it. Obama, no, he keeps that crap secret. Because for some reason, that's the way he is. He wants to be secretive about allowing a spying agency to spy on all of America and the UK. And he wants to be secretive about drone strikes killing so many innocent people in another country. He wants to silence whistleblowers, including Bradley or now Chelsea Manning and Edward Snowden. The guy needs a break. And I mean by break that he needs out of there. I've I'm just sick of seeing what he has next for the whole thing. The new controversy with Rob Ford excluding the stuff with his drug use and those whole nine yards in which he has claimed that the pride flag which was I'm not sure if it is still down or whatever, but was he wanted it taken down from City Hall, despite a lot of people thinking or alleging that he is homophobic. And first of all, a man is re is um, entitled to his opinions, like Phil Robertson. For some reason, it seemed fit to kick him off of Duck Dynasty just because he said that homosexuality is like bestiality. That's his own opinion. And let alone the interview with him, it had not a bloody thing to do with Duck Dynasty. It was just about him. And for some reason, it seems fit to kick him off of a show that's not just about him. It's about the whole Robertson family. And in this case, the, they're saying that he's homophobic just because he believes that the pride flag does not represent all Canadians. Last time one would check, yes, it was, it is the Canadian flag that is used to represent all Canadians, as with the pride flag representing um, homosexual pride. And pride against, eh, uh, pride against, pride amongst the homosexuals. And with the whole thing about um, boycotting slash protesting, what have you, the anti-gay laws in Russia, or if you're gay or are advertising homosexuality in Russia, you're going to get the living crap beat out of you. And yes, that is a rule brought in by Vladimir Putin, which is probably, what completely, well, actually not only that, but also the massive slaughter of stray dogs that have probably 
knocked them out of the reach of the Nobel Peace Prize despite him allowing asylum for Edward Snowden. But, just the whole thing with assuming, like what I had wrote about in a previous Blazon Nation post on the official blog, blazonnation.tk, about the thing to do with the gay person getting stabbed and nearly to death by supposed homophobic people, which on the news it was automatically, well maybe not so much automatically, but right there assumed that, well it's not yet known if this is a hate crime, when it doesn't matter what the motivation is. A crime is a crime. And to keep on assuming these things, and it's not often, or at least it's not often in the media that it's the other way around, other than in the Luca Magnata case, which probably had nothing to do with any hate or anything other than the fact that Luca Magnata was sick in the mind, but for someone to say that a flag that represents a group of people, to claim that he is hateful just because of this, and he says that it doesn't represent all Canadians. It is pretty much a fact. It does not represent all Canadians. The Canadian flag represents Canadians from all denominations, what have you, cultures, all that. As for the pride flag, it just represents the LGBTQ community. And sure it's not a bad thing to have it up and boycotting or whatever of the anti-gay laws in Russia because of course it's absolutely ridiculous what's going on there with the stray dog slaughter, the anti-gay law, the um, the whole thing over a murder being an accident. Russia's digging themselves a very deep hole. But then again, in any case, any of this stuff that is just keeping on marking Rob Ford as bad as what he does. It just gets a little... actually it gets really annoying. With the whole crack cocaine scandal, when he used his own money for that, and it's his own personal life. So why the heck does his personal life have to become the what's in the public knowledge? Just because he smoked something that's illegal, and he is uh, his own money for it. If it was the government's money, that's a different story, because that's not his money being used for the crack cocaine, but he used his own money for the drugs. That's his issue. Not everyone else's. And... D just the whole nine yards. Some people don't seem to understand the border between public and personal life. Even with celebrities. <sighs> Not all a person's personal life, like, that, that's the reason why it's called a personal life or private life. It's because it's not to be known to the public, what they're doing in their private life. Their public life is what's known to the public. But for some reason lately, private lives have had to be known to the public because they have to know everything about what the heck it is you're doing. 
and then they can criticize it because of it. And that's really a lot of what all this disliking of Rob Ford has been coming from, is his antics with his personal life. Which, in the first place, is no one's business. Sure, it's nice to know that he doesn't use the city's money for his past habits. Oh, pardon me. But, just quit simply. People need to quit assuming stuff. Look at the facts. And, again, no. The pride flag does not represent all of Canada. In fact, it doesn't even just represent gay Canadians. It represents pretty much any any gay person from any gay country. Or at least that's from what I know. I could be wrong, but I doubt I'm wrong. But that's what the gay prayed f prayed. <laughs> well, I'm screwing up here. What they prayed flag. I'm so screwed up. Pride flag represents, and the Canadian flag, it represents every single Canadian. Not just the gay ones, not just the stray ones, everyone. No matter what race, sexual orientation, gender, etc., you are. It represents you, and sorry about that little ding you probably just heard. Just got an email notification. But that is all from that, and like I promised before, let's get into the all-new segment, which I like to call this. So, this is the all-new segment, Blaze on Reviews, for my double-A, triple-A reviews on films, games, etc. And tonight's review... It came out in October uh, from Misher Films, MGM, and Scream Gems Carrie, which is the 2013 remake of the 1976 adaption of the same novel, same name novel, by Stephen King. It showcases a teenage girl who is a social outcast who discovers that she harnesses telekinetic powers after a certain school conflict. More specifically, her first ever menstrual period. Which, just a little tiny spoiler, even though if you watch a lot of the Carrie stuff, you'll probably already know what the whole story is about. Because that's pretty much what it all is, is it expected to know the whole story. And then when you finally watch the movie, you get to go for the whole ride. And in which she believes she is bleeding to death because her overly religious and mentally ill mother believes she, well, she never told her about this and she believes she's sinned because she uses the showers at school which these other girls at school use and because she's had a menstrual period, so, oh, she must be engaging in, um, sexual intercourse? That's what it was. And so later, she's bullied and bullied, and little does everyone know that at senior prom, which is everybody's dream fling to go on at this school, hell breaks loose. Because one girl has in a whole scheme of revenge to get back at Carrie over something that is totally the bully's own fault and dumps pig's blood on her. But that's pretty much the whole hypnosis of the story is girl gets bullied to the point where where um, she causes all hell to break loose causing a lot of people to die and 
then her mother attempts to kill her because that's what she planned on doing at her birth. So, to the reviewing part, let's get to the characterization and acting. So, we have Chloe Grace Moretz who's had some experience with horror films and Julian Moore, which the last time I saw in a movie other than Carrie was Children of Men, which was a very good movie. And mm, may I, dare I say it, Julianne Moore just nailed the role. She, in some, in parts when she had to act like she was completely out of her mind, she, she just nailed it. I'm not exactly sure how to describe it, but probably if you saw her in real life, you'd think she was mentally ill. You'd think she was out of her freaking mind. From cutting herself to, um, not manipulating, something like that, um, to injuring the heck out of her fingers trying to break through a door to attempting to murder her own daughter due to the fact that she believes she sinned because she ended up pregnant with Carrie and wow I cannot believe I already forgot that one um, thumbnail I had up and please copyright people don't go after me for this but there we go we got Carrie to my right at least yeah, mostly my right. Um, and then there's Chloe Grace Moretz, who has had experience in horror films. And unfortunately, she is... Compared to Sissy Spacek, she... Sissy Spacek was, frankly, the original Carrie from the novel was supposed to be ugly, pimply, etc. But unfortunately, Chloe Grace Moretz, in terms of looks, she's just a little too cute. <laughs> I'll admit it, she's just a little too cute for the looks of the part, but otherwise, her acting is pretty much very good. She does the part very well. Despite the whole thing with her moving her arms around to do all the telekinesis. Which you probably wouldn't see too much of in the original film. And I will tell you right now that I have not seen the original film yet. I am dying to see it though. I really badly want to get the DVD off of Amazon. And then maybe have a family movie night with my folks for it. Because I know it's a brilliant movie. And... Yeah. And then... Uh, I forget her name already, but the actor who played Chris Harginson... Good lord, she just struck me as just an awful witch. She would just go to no end to... Bring hell to Carrie's life. Just probably one of the best ways to put it. She just... Any way she could uh, make Carrie feel bad, she'd do it. If it was throwing tampons at her while she's having her first menstrual period, it was that. If it's in the very beginning telling Carrie that she eats crap, she'd do it. If it's posting a YouTube video of her, period, she'd do it. Anything. Even dumping pig's blood on her at the prom to later have her wreak hell on everyone else. Absolutely, she'd do it. And then finally, kill her. Absolutely. freaking lootly she would not hesitate to kill her because hey she's Carrie 
She's a dweeb. She's a loser. Screw her. Let's get rid of her. And the actor, I fail to remember what her name is, but she just does the part so well. And just pretty much every other few characters does it well. Just really no other way I can put it. Her, the teacher character, Mrs. Jardin, the actor who plays her, does the supportive part very well. She, um, you actually feel like she is really there for Carrie. Um, Sue Snell actually wants to make up for the crap she pulled on Carrie. And, yeah. So let's get to the setting. So this takes place in present day. So unlike the original, which took place in the 60s. So about 10 years ago from itself. And then the new one, it takes place in 2013. And so Carrie, instead of being probably born in the 1950s, she is born in 1995. So she's just a tad older than myself. And really, it doesn't have too much of a burden on anything. There is an additive to the prom scene where there is a YouTube video shown of Carrie having her period because mean old Chris Harkinson takes the YouTube video with her cell phone. And pretty much everything in the movie is mon modernized. Um, it's not really that relevant to the story. But as an additive, it doesn't break the story. So I gotta give it at least that. It still works well with the story. But it's not necessary. Other than, I suppose you could leave it to that... It helps make it more relatable to teens this day and age. Because that's how a lot of teens these days will bully the crap out of each other. They do it online, on YouTube, on phones. That's where a lot of the bullying these days in schools happens now. They don't do it in person. They do it almost anonymously and that's how a lot of crap happens especially all this trash about policing the internet um, having extra m uh, monitoring of Facebook and all that because teens don't know their limits they can't seem to just have some gosh darn respect for each other if if there's a difference between them, they they gotta be ber berserk over it. Like there is no having differences. And last time, I'm sure everyone learned. That's what made the world interesting was differences, and in terms of. Um, the bullying situation, I think the movie portrays it very well. And I'm not exactly sure that quite goes with the setting. Well, maybe more so the storyline. But, next up, let's get to the special effects and the music. So, actually, the special effects are very well done. Quite simply that, they... Um... I've heard a bit about the originals effects, and they're a heck of a lot better. Then again, of course they would be, because it's made this day and age, although there are some movies made somewhat a bit ago that, that do have their crappy effects, because these companies would rather go for the money than for actually making an actually good film. 
but that is definitely one great quality, at least one good, one very, very good quality in carry. And then as for the music, the only, honestly, the only problem I have with the music is at the very end, there's the rock music, which, honestly, in my opinion, it doesn't really fit much at all for a horror movie. I think it should have been more sorrowful, more, um, more eerie. Like, take the... Actually, I have a great suggestion for that. In the trailers, you hear the remixed version of Lickley's Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow. They should have had the... Uh, ending, the remixed ending part of that. The Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow, and then the repeating tomorrow with the... <laughs> that should have been at the ending. That... That would have easily allowed me to give this a higher score. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. It's a very, very good movie. I I absolutely loved the movie myself. My mother was a tad more critical because she had seen the original. And I guess she just didn't like that Chloe Grace Moretz got the role. And I even told her that. Lindsay Lohan was suggested for the role, and my mother said she'd have been better because she didn't look as aesthetically pleasing, I suppose. Um, I guess depending on what you'd consider pleasing in terms of the role, I guess basically looking ugly. Although I suppose they could have even just made... Chloe Grace Moretz a little uglier. There's the thing called makeup artists. They do that a lot in movies. They make a lot of people uglier. Like even take Star Trek for example. They have the Klingons with the wrinkles on their foreheads and everything. Maybe you have that dumb makeup artist in there. And well, not necessarily make Carrie look like a Klingon. But at least maybe get some pimples in there or something or other. Still recognizable, of course, but basically not as pretty to the uh, modern day standards, I suppose you could put it that way. And lastly, to the storyline. Now, the movie, the storyline of. The newer carry is, of course, a lot definitely tweaked from the original because it's set in present day, which in the original movie and text, there weren't, there wasn't YouTube, there weren't smartphones, not the modern cars, any of that stuff. So definitely quite a few tweaks. Although, again, the smartphone one and the um, internet, YouTube thing, it's not really um, required for the story. It's, uh, it's definitely an additive, again, but it doesn't break it. That's pretty much the simple point to that, is... It still works even with the additive of the modern day technology. So, still the story is very good, although in the prom scene it's a wonder whether um, the whole gym actually laughed at her, or whether we're just not being told that this whole scene is just Carrie's perspective of them all laughing at her when they weren't laughing at her at all. Although it's definitely questionable as Mrs. Desjardin um, walks her way through the middle of the crowd to uh, request to help Carrie because she's had this sudden shock 
and then although I honestly forget now whether um, at the point Tommy Ross got banged with the bucket or not or what but it still works out very well so I guess for scores here I'm gonna give the characterization and acting about an I'd say about a nine the a nine a solid nine out of ten the setting from me it, it it still works very well and it doesn't break anything so I'd say pretty much hits the spot 10 the special effects oh and then not to mention they actually got the name of the school right because in the original they call it the Bates High School but in the remake they call it the Ewen High School so it's definitely an improvement there that they get the names right so so I can definitely give that a 10 the special effects and music, I will have to give that about an 8.5. I really could have lived with that. Well, most of the music is pretty much fine the way it is. But the ending should definitely have been more horror, more eerie. Or, again, the remixed ending of the Lickly song that you'd see in one or so of the trailers. And lastly, the storyline. Um, nothing of... None of the additives are breaking to it. Um, I'm thinking this one's probably about a 9.5 for me some of this stuff but mostly the fact that the whole gym wasn't supposed to laugh at her like in the original where the mother just said that they're all gonna laugh at her and so she believes that after being drenched in blood then as well as her um watch me as well as there is the missing scene or at least I I don't remember seeing it where she says that um where Carrie explains to her mother that basically there's nothing wrong with her having telekinesis and there are other people who can do what she can do. And that if she concentrates hard enough, I can move things with my mind. Or control things with my mind. So overall, I'm quite excited about how high I might actually get to rate this. Because I thought it was going to be a little lower than I'd have preferred to have been able to give it but I think I'm gonna give be able to give it a pretty good score I'm gonna recalculate that just to make sure 9 plus 10 so characterization and acting is a 9.0 setting is a 10 out of 10 special effects and music an 8.5 and storyline is a 9.5 so let's add those up and I just screwed up one of the numbers, the 10, because I, I accidentally put a 19, making it a 10, 19 thing. So let's see this. And I'll probably edit this little part out. 37 divided by 4. The overall rating, 4 carried the... 
um, claimed readaption of the novel, or popularly called the 2013 remake of the 1976 adaption. Great work by Mr. Films, MGM, Screen Gems, Kimberly Pierce, all of you. Carrie from Blazon Reviews and Blazon Nation gets a 9 out of. No. A 9.3 out of 10. So there you go, folks. That is the very first Blazon review. That isn't just text. So that's all for t tonight's episode. I think anyone who did watch, um, I'll just disable that picture now. And I hope you all had a great Valentine's Day today. Um, my computer hopefully enjoyed it. <laughs> and I, I wish you all a happy Family Day weekend. Um, just some shout outs to. What else? Something's going on with just a gaming blog, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Um, FF Split, I'm still waiting them, uh, waiting on Llama or whatever his name is. Sorry if I did get your name wrong. Um, who is working on FF Split, which you can find at ffsplit.com. It is basically the VLC media player just a little nicer looking of live streaming software I'm still waiting on the um, capability of using mp3 files so I anticipate that and I wish that he keeps up the good work that he has been keeping up and yeah that's actually about all of my shout outs for this week. And no, not sponsors. I don't really have any of those yet. But, yeah, I thank you all for tuning in. I will try to make Blaze on Nation more consistent. Just gotta find some good articles. Maybe even stuff that peeves me right off. Because that stuff's really, really good. And, yeah. This is JBJ Blaze tuning out. And before I go, you will probably have noticed that I am guest, that I was guestless for this episode. Because I wasn't able to reach Cheddarface or The Thing or even Maz. Which, I did actually get some contact with him over Twitter through Blazon Nation and yeah so actually before I close up you can follow me at at JBJ Blaze on Twitter um, you can find the video version of this episode at youtube.com slash JBJ Blaze you will notice I have a new title for my channel JBJ Blaze and TFA which TFA stands for the flippin awesome our steam group which is the flippin' awesome, all one word. And then, Blazon Nation's all new Twitter, at Blazon Nation. And so, again, this is JBJ Blaze saying goodbye for the weekend. And let's close this baby up now. What do you mean you want more? Or did you miss something? Hey, if so, go to blazonation.tk for more articles and show notes, theflippinawesome.engine.com slash BNP for show notes, and to sponsor a future episode. Right, and I actually, I forgot to mention, mention, but, um, I have a new thing up. This is a new project I'm starting on called Ender Radio, which if you love Minecraft music and you want to have pretty much just an online radio thing for it, 
bit.ly or bit.ly slash ender dash radio. So I um, recommend you check that out. And hopefully I can get some more music up on there soon as well as some ads and maybe other stuff as well. Anyhow, I thank anyone who's tuned in for tuning in. And this is JBJ Blaze tuning out. Bye-bye.